All right, hello everyone. My name is Jack. Um, today I will be presenting on the topic of Skirmian uh, spin torque nano oscillators and magnetic waveguides. Uh, this is a fairly complicated and involved subject, so I'm just going to kind of give an introduction to the idea of skirmionics and magnonics. Um, cool. So this is what I'm going to be going over. Just a basic introduction, um, touching on a couple models covered in several research papers, um, sort of the interactions between skirmions and magnons. Um, as well as giving a brief introduction to magnonics as a whole, and then sort of the applications and um, some future uh, conceptual stuff. It is a fairly new topic. Yeah, so basically skirmions are a collection of um, spins, right, that are concentrated in the stable nano-sized uh, texture uh, due to the DM anti-symmetric uh, interactions um, found in different types of specifically very thin ferromagnetic films. Um, so this isolated region uh, is configured to be topologically protected. Um, they talk a lot about the difference between uh, energy uh, st stability and topological stability. So the topological stability just basically means that the uh, polarization of all the spins is sort of conserved in this distinct manifold. Um, there's a lot of pretty intense mathematics that goes behind it, but essentially you can think of it as like a shape that the spin is distributed across. Um, so then here are two depictions of different skirmions. We have the block and the meow. Uh, obviously one is the 2D uh, plane transversal on the left, and then one is just a singular uh, plane transverse. Um, and normally these shapes are um, spherical as that's the least that minimizes energy. So like um, the sphere, I guess, across three dimensions is like the most um, minimized uh, topological shape manifold. Um, so yeah, going into that a little bit more. Uh, basically, the way that these things arise is due to the uh, DM anti-symmetric interactions. So you would kind of have a fully stable, fully polarized um, thin film or something. And then it would need sort of a driving anti-symmetric interaction to sort of, uh, you know, get this skirmion kick started and then it would sort of form these shapes. Um, and again, the math is pretty complicated, but it does boil down to a pretty simple equation, which is basically just take, taking a cross product of the two in-plane components of the magnetization across, integrated across uh, essentially a, a sphere, or in this case would be a circle. Um, and then this has been normalized to what is called the topological index, and they call it the topological charge, even though it has nothing to do with the actual inherent property of charge. Um, but this is quantized to either plus or minus one. Um, and then, yeah, essentially the distribution of spins in this topologically stable region uh, will maintain that top topology until acted upon by a significant spin torque, uh, which could be from like a spin polarized spin current, something like that. Um, but this is what makes skirmions so unique and useful is they will kind of maintain this shape um, despite, you know, all the other, you know, they can be lying in a thin magnetic film that is completely polarized in one direction and will have this kind of unique um, vortexy polarization and axis, sort of, it's got its own domain walls. Um, so yeah, um, a couple of ways that this is useful is, um, basically turning this um, stable topological manifold into a nano oscillator. Um, so it will kind of drive the oscillating spin waves. Um, and the three mechanisms for getting this started um, is gyrotropic helical motion induced by spin torques, um, the breathing mode fluctuation or breathing mode due to fluctuation in size, which again would have to require some induced spin current of some sort. Um, and then specifically in the paper that I was looking at with the figures depicted, uh, they talk about the deformation due to spatially dependent spin current. So again, injecting a sort of spin current to drive this sort of shape movement. It'll kind of deform and um, elongate as you can see. Um, so yeah, this is sort of the process uh, that they did. They had these two uh, pinning walls on these domain walls on either side. 
Uh, and they sort of injected this polarized uh, spin current, which spin current, I was having a little trouble like differentiating between you know regular current and spin current. And it's essentially just a polar a, a current that's been completely polarized in one direction. And then so as it's you know moving along, uh, you're not getting sort of these random spins, but your spin torque is all you know neatly coming off at orthogonal angles. Um, so yeah, the, the spin current injection will kind of shape uh, a, a sort of region in the center, as you can imagine. Um, and then they will let it sort of relax. And then the uh, skirmium will form in sort of an elongated state, uh, which I'll show in the next slide. Um, and so then after relaxation, uh, the important uh, part of this study is that uh, the net uh, average magnetization in the Z component, so coming out of the plane, um, will kind of oscillate. And as you can see, it's on an extremely small time scale, um, but the amplitude is periodic, as you can tell. And then using, obviously, the fast Fourier transform, you can sort of see that it's operating in the microwave range at about 2.1 gigahertz-ish. Um, so you have this sort of oscillating magnetization, which is, again, like the key component of um, magnetics and such. Um, but yeah, here, this just kind of shows how they went about it, um, injecting that spin current. And then uh, as you can tell by the um, sort of the, you know, transitions, uh, at a certain point, uh, they will then relax. There'll be no more uh, net magnetization and then the sort of blob will sort of, you know, undulate, if you will, into this elongated skirmion shape. Um, So yeah, uh, the importance of this is that uh, the domain wall is initially at equilibrium um, when the spin current is applied. Um, that's just due to a lot of interactions between um, the spin current itself as well as the already polarized um, domain walls, um, which I believe, yeah. Um, but the point is the elongated skirmion uh, spin torque nano oscillator produces a sort of uh, a force that will kind of drive this oscillation um, just because of the differences in, in spin polarizations coming off of what is a, it's a, you know like a, a set in stone domain wall the pinning wall and this sort of undulating um, skirmion so here's our skirmion has some nice periodic oscillation as you can see, these are all the spins. And the red is basically out of plane, the blue is in plane. And so the important part is at the top, which is basically the domain wall, and it's sort of got this nice periodic oscillation. So obviously, waves are incredibly crucial for all sorts of information transport. Um, and yeah, just a side note, I think spin waves are pretty, pretty cool. And kind of out there concept. Um, so that being said, yeah, so this segues nicely into the field of magnonics, which again, I said is based around spin waves, which is um, pretty fascinating because you are now eliminating the inherent property of charge and focusing solely on spin to convey the essentially energy, right? Um, so the field of magnetics based on the dynamic excitation of magnetically ordered materials, i.e. spin, um, and the quantized spin waves are called magnons, um, which are formed by different interactions between symmetric and anti-symmetric forces. Um, and then they sort of are um, driven by this spin current idea. Uh, as I mentioned, the propagation is analogous to charge carriers through a conductor, but the inherent property is replaced. Um, so you're basically not looking at electric potential anymore, but you're looking at the inherent, uh, you know, quote unquote, angular momentum of a uh, particle. Um, and then thin nanofilms are ideal systems for magnetics. That's where a lot of people do research uh, with to sort of um, exploit these uh, spin waves and their properties. Uh, yeah, so tying the two together, the Elongated skirmion acting as a nano oscillator. 
uh, has been studied as an ideal magnetic wave guide for spin waves traveling along the domain wall axis. As you saw, we sort of had that oscillating uh, magnetization of spin wave. Um, and so once the driving spin current, which gets our elongated spin man going, is removed, you will obviously have a, a sort of damping effect and your spin wave will die off. But for the time being, you have a sort of generated uh, spin current. And this just shows you sort of the total energy uh, distribution and magnetization along the wall axis uh, over one period. Um, so as far as applications go, there's a lot of uh, like rudimentary stuff that needs to be hammered out. Um, there's some really good supplementary material uh, provided by this uh, specific research paper that's talking about, you know, building very basic logic gates um, using uh, spin waves, which uh, I read into, but I wasn't going to touch on because it was way over my head, but it's pretty cool stuff. Um, but this is sort of the basic proposed concept for the uh, spin torque nano oscillator driven magnetic wave guide. Um, obviously, the part in the middle is sort of the, um, uh, even if we were looking at with the uh, the pin, the, the pinning domain, domain walls and the uh, nucleation of the uh, skirmion. Um, and then you would sort of have your spin current being driven across uh, parallel to the domain walls. Uh, and then from there, you could sort of generate your spin waves and it would act as a nice waveguide for it. Uh, and I believe that is all I have. These are my sources. Thank you for listening.